So last week, Apple announced the new M3 MacBook Pro lineup, and this time, I maxed it out completely. But I don't think most of you should. Let me explain, let's ramble. Hold up, days go well when I pull up, they all on me like at once. Hey, what is up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So yeah, the M3 MacBook Pros are here, and they're absolutely insane. Unfortunately, so is the price, or at least it is if you opt for the M3 Max version and you spec it out all the way. Just for kicks and giggles, let's have a look. So here we are on the Apple website, and at first glance, these prices look, you know, pretty reasonable. I mean, it's a lot of money, but these are high-end computers, and so far, I'm not shocked. It's when you start to move away from the absolute base configuration and you start adding on the performance boosts. That's where things get a little nuts. Now, the M3 Max, which is the one I went for, and again, I will explain in a minute why I did that, already has a steep starting price at $31.99. But if you're gonna invest in that top tier model, you're gonna want the non-binned version with a 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, and 16 core neural engine. Besides, if you wanna max out the unified memory to 128 gigabytes, you're gonna have to pick that configuration or you'll be capped at 96 gigs. But adding on that extra headroom of unified memory will cost you another $1,000. Now this is the first year I also maxed out the storage and that's for a very specific reason which I will elaborate on later. Adding that eight terabyte on will set you back another 2.2K. I don't need any of the software which brings the grand total of this laptop to a whopping $6,899. Guys, that is a lot of money for a computer. Now, if you're based in Europe like I am, you're double screwed because the exact same configuration over here will run you 8,304 euros, which comes down to roughly $8,874.07. I mean, that is absolutely insane and by far the most I've ever paid for a computer. So why did I do it? Well, my first Mac was a 27 inch iMac. I'd been curious about Macs for a while, but they were still far from mainstream and most offices back then used PCs exclusively. I personally hadn't used anything but PCs all my life as well, but when I finally did take the plunge and I invested in that iMac, and after you know the initial day or so of getting used to the different operating system, a new world opened up to me and I haven't looked back since. I thought it was an absolute treat to work with, and until this day, I've not regretted that switch for a second. I do use PCs for gaming for obvious reasons, but for my work, I'm all in on Apple. Macs are basically problem free, and since Apple introduced their own silicon chips, there's just no competition. Now the MacBook I currently own and use for all of my work is the 14 inch M1 Max, and it is easily the best computer I've ever owned. It still does a really great job at most things, which is why I had zero interest in upgrading to the M2 MacBook Pro. I actually did a separate video last year about why I skipped the M2 in case you're interested. Anyway, the M1 Max is still a beast, but every now and then it does start to struggle a little bit on the more complex video projects. And that's how I know that it's probably time for me to move on and upgrade. Now, taking a look at the options, which is basically the M3, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max, there's only very few differences on the surface. The design looks pretty much the same as the previous silicon models, except that the new space black color is only available on the Pro and the Max models. Those come in space black and silver. Interestingly, you can't get the Pro models in space gray, but the non-Pro models come only in space gray and in silver, so no space black. So basically space black has replaced space gray for the Pro models. But please don't go and get a pro model just because you want that shiny new black one. It's a lot of money for a fresh coat of paint. I mean, it's your money, you do you, but I definitely wouldn't. There's a few more minor differences compared to the previous models. The brightness got a little bump from 500 to 600 nits with the peak HDR brightness staying the same at 1600 in HDR. Now there are some differences in design or IO between the regular M3 and the Pro models, but even with those considered, the base model is a really enticing option. The 14 inch base model comes with the same beautiful Liquid Retina XDR display and 120 Hertz Pro Motion, same microphones, same speakers as the higher end models. It does have fewer Thunderbolt ports, but for the typical user, that shouldn't really be a problem. What might matter to some is that it can only drive a single display just like the M2 MacBook Air, for instance. So if that's a problem for you, you might wanna look into upgrading to a Pro model. Those can drive two displays, and the Max model can drive as many as four displays, 
which will be complete overkill for most users. But that's really it for the major differences. The real differentiator is of course the under the hood performance of these machines. And what is interesting to see here is that the base model M3 gets some serious upgrades compared to the M2 model, including all of the new GPU features like ray tracing. It also finally starts at 512 gigs of storage, which on a pro model should 100% be the absolute minimum anyway. Now what is more important about this than just the bump in storage is that this also means that you get not one but two NAND chips on the base model. You might recall the single NAND chip issue on the base M2 Pro and M2 Air models, which caused problems with memory swapping that led to slowdown in these machines. That will not be a problem now, and that's a big win for the base model in my opinion. On the contrary, the Pro model actually seems a little bit worse than last time. I won't go into too much detail here, but the benchmarks that have been floating around the internet show that it's basically not significantly faster at all than the M2 MacBook Pro. So unless you really, really want that space black, but you don't want to invest in an M3 Max, it's a very difficult one to recommend for me. Maybe Apple wants to make the distinction clearer between the Pro and the Max. They did do a similar thing to the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which now no longer have the same specs and you will have to spend the extra bucks for the Pro Max if you want all those top features like the better camera. Speaking of that space black, I really hope it doesn't smudge like the midnight on my M2 MacBook Air. I love that blue shade, but the fingerprints drive me nuts. And that's the reason why I actually started carrying this little guy with me wherever I go. This cleaning kit is actually made by Paperlike, and if you watch my iPad videos, you already know I'm a big fan of their screen protectors, but this thing here might actually be my favorite product of theirs of this year. And a lot of you guys have been asking me about the previous version of this that, you know, randomly popped up in my videos, but Paperlike recently came out with this new and improved version that actually allows you to refill it yourself. You just spray it on the surface you want to clean, the entire bottle acts as a microfiber cloth, and when you're done, you just stick it back in the plastic hard shell. Absolutely genius. I love this thing, and if you want to pick one up for yourself, there's a link down in the description below. Now, needless to say that the M3 Max is an absolute beast and a half, and I should hope so for that kind of money. I have specced out all of the Max that I bought since the 2019 16-inch one, which at the time was an absolute rocket ship. Sadly, it also sounded like one, but that's a different matter. And it was the last Intel MacBook Pro. The only thing I consistently did not max out was SSD storage. My reasoning has always been that it's cheaper to use very fast external SSDs with the added advantage of being able to use those with other devices as well. However, the internal SSDs on these MacBooks have become so blazing fast that no external SSD can even hold a candle to them. Plus, I shoot all my videos in 4K, and in reality, it's often downsampled 6K or even 8K, and what that means is that the video files I work with are enormous, and running out of storage is a lot easier than you would think. Sure, I do have external SSDs that are fast enough to edit straight from the drive, but when I'm traveling, I don't wanna be reliant on external SSDs. And even when I switch between my studio here and my home office, there's nothing worse than packing up my MacBook and all my stuff only to find out that the project I need is on some SSD drive. Long story short, many times I've regretted cheaping out on the storage, and so this time I will not make that mistake. Yes, internal storage is expensive, very expensive even, but my MacBook is my single most important tool in my workflow. It is what I use to run my businesses every single day, and so I decided this purchase is justified and I will just have to bite the bullet. The extra money that I'll spend on this will earn itself back without a doubt. The same is true for the unified memory. It is important for me for those complex video timelines where I use multiple cameras, color grading, several plugins stacked on top of each other. You know, having that extra headroom in terms of memory will give me that peace of mind for the next few years to come. The reason, by the way, I consistently go for the 14 inch version is very simple. Whenever I'm at the studio, I will dock my MacBook and I'll hook it up to a larger external screen like the studio display. And when I do want to edit while traveling, I much prefer the smaller form factor. It's much easier to hold, and I find the 16 inch way too big for those little airplane tray tables. So the smaller form factor for traveling and the large external displays for office work provide the perfect combo for me. And speaking of travel, that is where that amazing all day battery life comes in. Not a PC in the world can compete with that. Now to come back to my original statement, for normal work that is not processor or GPU intensive, you do not need the Max chip. And as I just said, I wouldn't really recommend the Pro, 
So I'm convinced that the base M3 is gonna be more than enough for most professional workflows. So unless you really, really, really want that space black, get the regular M3. And if you're someone who needs the M3 Max chip, you already know you need it. It's most likely how you make your money and the M3 Max is definitely the best your money can buy right now. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does go a long way. Subscribe for more content and stay tuned for some links to videos you might also wanna watch.